So I remember one of the ulama who mentions a very interesting story. And some may be surprised by this. And some may think this is a level which is too high. But I'll explain that. The story of his is one of the ulama and his sons till today are very big mujtahideen. It was either his son or his grandson who are big mujtahideen. So the ones that live today, their grandfather. He's in Najaf al-Ashraf. Najaf al-Ashraf at the time, it was summer. When the time of Dhuhr comes, of course, in the Middle East and other countries, many of you know how hot it is, how difficult it is to be at that time of Dhuhr outside. So what they would do is they would go into the basement. And often houses would have a double basement. What they call sardab, two sardab. So one inside the another. So that they can stay cool during the afternoon. Then they come out, for example, uh, out into the city at four or five o'clock. This Sayyid, he said, for some reason or another, I had to go out to, for something important at the peak of the time of Dhuhr. So I'm walking in the streets. Naturally, no one is there. Everyone is inside. 40, 45, 50 degrees. Everyone is inside. So as, I, as I'm walking, no one is there. I see that there's the local masjid where people normally pray. And I saw that there is someone who is known in this city to be insane. He's known to be Majnoon. This person has entered into that masjid. So I was worried that what if this person, for example, makes the masjid najis? For example, even children. You should be careful when you bring children into a masjid. No, Husseiniya. A masjid that they don't make that masjid najis. Because it's a big sin to make a masjid najis. As we know that if, for example, Salatul Jama'ah is going on. And there is some sort of najasa in the masjid. I give preference to removing that najasa, then I will join Salatul Jama'ah. The preference is to make the masjid tahir. So says, I saw this person entering into the masjid. Everyone knows he's majnoon, he's insane. So I was worried he's going to make the masjid najis. So I quickly followed him and I saw that he had entered into the, the masjid and closed the door behind him. And he's praying. And he's doing ibadah. What was strange, however, is I decided to creep inside. Today when I see him praying, I've never seen him act like this before. He's mentioning certain dua and dhikr that I've never heard in my life. He's crying with khushu and fear and humility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said, Billah, this person cannot be crazy. This person isn't insane. Something's going on. Because no one can do this type of prayer. No one can do this type of buka and cry for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be someone who's insane. So he says, I waited for that person to finish. Then when I announced myself, he realized that I was here. I said, look, tell me your story. Because your story is something that's, something is going on here. People know you to be majnoon. You're perfectly fine. What's going on? So he didn't say anything. Until he kept denying, kept denying, kept denying. Until I said to him, for the sake of the person that has made you act majnoon, tell me what's going on. He says, when he heard that, he says, now you've made me take oath of someone. And I can't do anything about this. I have to tell you. He says, what is it? He said, I decided, this person who claims to be crazy. I decided to develop myself spiritually. So I was involved in certain spiritual practices. I was involved in certain things. I would come to pray salah in one of the mosques uh, in congregation, jama'ah, every single day. I'm fasting, I'm doing all types of things to cleanse my soul. I wanted to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until I got a, found acquaintance in a person who also would attend that mosque for Salatul Jama'ah at the same time. For example, I come from Maghrib, he comes from Maghrib. He began speaking to me, conversing with me. I realized that this person is someone who is pure. Until eventually that person tells me that the reason why I have come to this masjid and have become friends with you is that this is the order of Sahib al Asri wa Zaman. Ajrillahu ta'ala farajahu sharif. I said to him, What do you mean the order of the holy Imam? He says, Yes, I'm one of those people who's lucky. And these people, there's a hierarchy of these people, of how close they are to the holy Imam. He says, I'm one of those people that's lucky enough to visit him often. He may not be the closest, but sometimes he allows me to go and see him and visit him. He told me to visit you, become friends with you, and help you on this spiritual path. 
So I said, really, you see Sahib al-Asr? And I mentioned a few nights ago, these people are amongst you. You don't realize who they are. That's why the scholars say, they say, be careful to who you humiliate, who you disrespect for sitting next to you could be a follower and someone close to Sahib Zaman or even more sitting next to you could be the son of Zahra alayhi salam. What, he doesn't come to the majlis? We don't know who these people are. He said the Imam told me to be close to you, to help you. So this person now has uh, suddenly a desire. He says, you see ho the holy Imam? He says, yes. He says, can I ask you for one thing, which every mu'min would want to ask. He says, can I see him one day? He said, look, I'll take you to the place where he sometimes is. I will go in. I will ask. If he says yes, okay. If he says no, don't ask any questions. Don't say why not this, go. Okay. The first day we went, he, he entered in. I saw the whole place is covered in noor. He came out smiling. He says he's given permission. I came in. I saw the face radiant like a moon. I didn't have anything to say. I'm speechless. I just saw him. The Imam smiled at me and says, you got what you wanted. You didn't ask any questions. And crying, I, I exited that place. And I'm happy that just I got to see the face of Sahib al-Asr. Again, now when a person sees him once, he wishes to see it every single day, every single hour. He wishes to be as close to that Imam as possible. A few weeks later, I asked again. He said the same condition. I'll go. If he says yes, yes. No, then you go. This time we went. He entered in. When that person comes out, his face is upset and angry. He said the Imam didn't give permission. Go from here. I said, I'm not going to fight with you. But tell me. What have I done during those few weeks? What were we talking about? The modesty of Musa alayhi salam. The way in which he lowers his gaze. The ways within which he takes care of this interaction. So this person enters, he asks Sahib Zaman, he comes out and he says, Sahib Zaman says, you are in the market one day? He says, no, I don't go to the market. He says, no, think. He says, yes, one day I was passing by the market. He said, you had seen a non-mahram? He said, yes. You looked at her once? Yes. What did you do then? He said, I lowered my gaze. He says, did you look at her a second time? He says, I put my face down. I said, yes. He said, Sahib Zaman says, the person that with his eyes looks at haram, how then can he see the face of Zahra alayhi salam? Some people think this is too high for me to act upon. This is too difficult. Remember once I mentioned this story and a very nice elderly man came to me laughing and said, if this is the criteria, then we have no chance. The thing is, no. When things are difficult, when I set the bar high, then I become something. People have this idea of I wish to be average. We don't want average. We want people that are able to see the face of Sahib Zaman when he's in Ghaybah and in Dhuhr. Why? Because their eyes would be lowered from that which is Haram.